So today I want to have a talk about tire pressures. Uh, you know, talking on these forums and, 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 and having reading people's comments, I, I think that there's a lot of people that have a profound misunderstanding of tire pressures. So today, like you're going to see weights and stuff. Uh, don't confuse this with axle capacities or truck, you know, capacities or payload or any of those other things. We're going to relate tire pressure uh, to axle weights so that people can understand how they can quickly get a, an accurate number, even a more accurate number than what's inside the door. So on, on the tire, you'll see you've got these little numbers here. And, and that's, so that says 40, uh, 80 pounds. So that's how many pounds that the tire will hold at a perfect uh, footprint on the ground. And that's what, you know, you're talking at the max pressure. <clears throat> so when, when you're saying, so that's 40, 80 pounds at 80 PSI for one tire, okay? So you would double that to figure out your axle capacity. Now, when you take a tire and you put a different tire on your truck and you're trying to figure out how to, how to get the right tire pressures, here's how you do it. You see a lot of people see that 80 pound number, <clears throat> so they buy E-rated tires and put them on an F-150 and they run them at 80 PSI. That's wrong. So what you're, what you're looking to do with these numbers um, is, is you're going to make a graph. Uh, you know, you can do this as a, as a percentage. And, uh, you know, you can do it a number of different numerical ways to figure out, um, you know, what the proper pressure is for that tire for an axle. So you're going to do it for your front axle and your back axle. So the, the way you do that, the first thing is you have to go, you're going to have to weigh the truck. And you're going to have to weigh it with the axle separate. And you're going to weigh it the way you would drive it, you know, whatever way you're going to drive it for, say, a trip, whether it's loaded or whether it's the way you drive it empty. Because when, when you get a PSI inside the door, it's for that tire um, at a specific weight that the manufacturer has figured out. And you don't know where the center of gravity of that load is, and you don't know what it is exactly. So when we do this by by graph, you're going to do a graph here with, with axle weights uh, on one side of the graph. And then on the other side of the graph, you're going to do uh, your tire pressures. Okay. So um, when you take these, uh, when you take this axle, it's going to give you one. So we're going to graph it from that and we're going to graph it from zero on a straight line. So now... In this tire, we know that this tire is rated for 40, 80 pounds per tire. So that's 8160 pounds at 80 PSI. So that becomes our dot on the graph. Okay. Now this is, this is you know, done shorthand. It's not uh, exactly accurate. So it's not going to show you exactly, but it'll give you roundabout numbers. Now, okay, so now you get a dot in the graph and you've got your zero pounds at zero PSI. Now, when we run that through, that's going to give us our, our, our averages. And you can, you can go from that line and figure out exactly how many pounds your axle should be based on, uh, you know, based on what uh, axle you're talking about and what weight it is on that day, okay? So when we, um, when we take these graphs... And that's, you're never going to run your axle at that 8160 on a half ton truck. So, so that's going to be, you know, you're probably going to be somewhere between three and 5,000 pounds at maximum, right? So when we see these graphs, we, we can add lines in, right? At, you know, that one is at 4,500 pounds. So when we draw that up, we, we can kind of calculate that comes out to around 44 pounds, So I want you to think about when, when you change the size of a tire, you're changing the angles, you're changing the width of the tire, you're changing the length of the contact patch of the tire, and that'll change your pressure needed. So pressure is PSI, and that's pounds per square inch. So the more square inches, less pounds you need. So when we, when we graph this out now, you can see that based on that graph and that angle, 
At 4,500 uh, pounds, an axle would be, need 44.12 psi. You know, at 3,800 pounds, it's going to need 37.12 psi. At uh, 3,400 pounds, that's going to need 34.3 psi. Now, every tire is is going to be calculated not on this graph, but but by the graph based on the little numbers on the side that tell you the psi and the weight rating. So now the next one you can do it now as a, a percentage. No, actually this will be a mathematical one. So we'll we'll do the mathematical one. So it's 80 psi divided by the 8160, which is two times the tire pressure, multiplied by the axle weight. And that'll actually give you a number. So when, when you do it this way, it's, it's very simple. So it's 80 PSI. It's the two numbers on the sticker. Well, it's the number PSI on the sidewall of the tire and two times the, the weight. And that gives you these numbers. So you can do it the same way. So you 80 divided by 8160 times 4500, you get the same 44.12. Times 3800, you get the same 37.25. So these are the ways, and this will work with every tire that you can buy uh, and, and every vehicle that you can put it on. So when you get a tire uh, and you change it, you can, you can change it up or down in size and, and, and in width, and it's going to change your PSI that you're going to run it at. So the next one we're doing here is going to be percentage. So, so if you take this... And you say, okay, well, the axle I'm running is 4,500, so 4,500 pounds on my rear axle over the 8,160, which is two times the tire rating of 40, 80 pounds. And then, so that gives you a number, right? So 4,500 divided by 8,160, and, and then you're going to come up with a percentage. So in this case, you get a percentage here, which is 0 0.5515 which is actually 55.15%. Okay, so if you take that uh, and multiply it back out by the, by the PSI of the tire, then, then you end up with, uh, with, with the new tire pressure. So let's just see here. This, this will give you, um, uh, this is kind of an easy way to calculate it out in, in a calculator. So, so you multiply your 0 0.5515 times your 80 PSI, and then you're going to get your, your 44.12 PSI. So, so this gives you your 44.12. Now, it, it, that's going to work out the same way, but you're going to start out with your different number every time for each axle. So if you, were, if you had an axle that was loaded at 3,800 pounds, um, that's going to give you, you know, 3,800 over the 8,160. So 3,800 divided by 8,160, and that gives you your percentage there. So it would, it's actually 0 0.4657 times 80, which gives you 37.25 PSI. So, so this is a way to get your tires. Like if you're going to change tire size, uh, a lot of people think, well, if they go up in tire size, then it's going to go up in PSI, but that's backwards. And, and a lot of people think, well, if I go to an E-rated tire, you know, it's a heavy-duty tire, so it must take more air pressure. But no, that's not always the case. So when, when you're looking at your tires and you're trying to figure out how to, how to do them, it's a mathematical equation, and it's based on those numbers that are on the side of the tire. So anyway, I, I hope this is helpful. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, you know, if, if you're running something and you want help figuring it out, put it in the comments below. And I hope you guys are enjoying this year, you know, so far. I hope you're getting a positive attitude and looking forward to coming out of this, uh, this pandemic and getting out there and using these tires. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, like and subscribe and, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.